hi guys and welcome to today's video and what you read in the title is correct and um, it's something that I feel like I just need to get off my chest before Christmas, before the new year so by when 2016 comes I don't even have to think about it anymore basically this all happened in September and I'm gonna fill you in with exactly what on earth happened to the couple that seemed so perfect. And it's definitely a lesson for me and hopefully a lesson for Chris. Um, by no means necessary is this a video of me slagging him off, because it's not. I already told him that I did want to do an update where I would cover this topic and um, I don't think he was particularly happy about it, but I feel like it's just something that I need to do. So I'm gonna have to give you a bit of a backstory for any of this to make sense. So I have always wanted to get married, have children, have that wonderful life with a house and be in love and all of that wonderful things. Um, and I thought me and Chris were on the same page with this. I remember a time when um, we were in the car together and he said to me like, I know how I'm gonna propose. And for years I clung on to that, that, that whole memory, um, I know exactly what location we are in, like, it was comforting to know that he thought about it, because often men don't really put that much thought into the future, and I mean, with my past relationship, I had actually moved in with um, my ex and then shortly after he decided that he needed space and was messing me about. Now I know everybody won't agree with me which is fine because not everyone wants to get married but that is just what I want, I just, I would have liked to have been somebody's wife. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, um, so yeah, um, and I remember this one time we were watching TV and I was watching this program called Say Yes to the Dress and I was like, oh, I'm looking at these wonderful dresses and um, and then like my mom, who is divorced and Chris were talking about how um, getting married is a waste of money and you don't need to do it, there's no point in it, which really, really upset me to the point where I had to get out of the room I couldn't be anywhere near him and that sort of resulted in us having a conversation where he was like no no I do want to get married. As you know my nan and granddad passed away, uh, my nan last year, my granddad this year and so I have inheritance which is enough to put a deposit on a house and so all I wanted to know was Chris's um, long term plan for us for his life, I would have put a deposit on a house for us. I sat him down, asked him, and he kept saying, oh, I don't know, I don't think that far ahead, which left me very pissed off because I'm the type of person that knows exactly what I want and I know how I'm gonna do it, how I'm gonna achieve it, when it's gonna be achieved by, and when you're with someone who's sort of the opposite, you have to, it's hard for me, for someone who's always in so much control to then not, be able to control and of course there's no way I'd want to be um, controlling over him and if I am like I really don't mean to. I think he must have thought about that for a while. We had a sit down on the bed not long after that I think where he told me that he didn't know if he ever wanted to get married which made me burst into tears. In my head it's not just a wedding, it's not just a dress, it's being joined with the person you love, being your wife letting everybody else know that you have that special person in your life with the ring and I don't know I don't think he sees it like that I think he sees it as oh, I just want it to be my day big dress um lots of money spent in debt which it's not so I noticed that things were sort of not so good he was a bit off with me for a couple of days he cancelled on me um a couple of nights which made me a bit suspicious and sort of wondered what I'd done wrong um, now he said that that was just totally coincidental that he just had to cancel on me because of other things which is fine but it just I know I knew something was up at that point um, now I keep a diary as you know he wasn't calling me hun or baby or anything like that which I know sounds really really ridiculous but 
considering it's used in pretty much every text between us, it was just like, well, what have I done wrong and why, why are you treating me like this? Because there was no warning of anything and basically I just got a feeling a couple of hours before I was due to see him that he was going to break up with me. <sighs> and I don't know where that feeling came from. Whew, I'm sorry. This was ages ago. I shouldn't be upset about this. Um, and anyway, like I wrote all about it in here. He basically came into my room, got upset, wasn't really talking to me. And so I was just like, what is going on? said that he didn't want marriage or children. And he doesn't believe it would be fair for me to not have those things because he doesn't want them and so the gist of it was that he was breaking up with me so that I could get over him and find someone who had the same values as I did so he was doing it because it was my best interests there was no sort of leeway not talking about it I sat on that bed eyes streaming hysterically crying i felt physically sick because he wasn't he, he just wouldn't say i'm breaking up with you he just would not say it It took about three hours i, I just kept saying like it's not necessarily what i want like I, I don't know if 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 it's something that would definitely happen i know i say it all the time and that's wrong of me for saying it which i now know it is i should never have spoke like that i should have kept it in my in my head really. I, I put all of this pressure on him and in turn he just pushed me as far away as you can get. Said that we could still be friends and I was just looking at him like no. It's like you're you're breaking my heart right now. We cannot be friends. So like, I cannot speak to you after this. Um, if this is what you really want, then I can't have anything to do with you. I can't speak to you. Which then upset him because I presume he thought that he could still be in contact with me. But I can't. After someone really, really hurts you like that, you just can't. Because um, you could never get over them. And it was just, it was so confusing because we were fine. Apart from, there'd been some, some times um, where we'd had hard years by where... Um, intimacy was affected for several reasons um, and so we became distant from each other no one would really say anything and we weren't really kissing properly other than just pecs and we were both aware of that and we talked about it and things had, were starting to get better he had told me that he wanted to do things more like go to places which was really confusing for me because we always go out all the time he kept saying like i don't want to do this i love you so i mean it's, it's it was very upsetting and confusing for me and basically we had to he, he wouldn't even kiss me Oh, I'm sorry, it just hurts. <laughs> it really hurts. Well, it did. <laughs> and, like, I'm reliving in my brain the memories of, like, that day. Um, and I don't want to. This is why I want to get this over and done with. And so I don't have to visit it in my brain. <laughs> or anything like that it's done and it always makes me cry reading reading like my diary and reading the times where i was actually really upset because then it brings me back to how i felt when i was writing it and so i'm not going to read it anymore i feel like i should have a new diary too but i had one for my birthday and as you can see i haven't got very far yet so i don't know maybe a new one would be a good idea he left or we went downstairs and it was really awkward because my mum didn't know anything about it. The front door is in the lounge, so my mum was in the lounge and I went outside with him and he was really, he was really upset. He was just as, well, not just us. He was upset, but I'm gonna say that I was more upset because of what he'd just done. And at that point, I'd got to feeling 
like it hurt my upset and my hurt had turned into anger which is what happens for me when um, people hurt me it very quickly turns into anger and then I just become numb to their feelings and he he physically struggled to walk away from me at that point and he pulled up in his car and he was like is there any going back from this if I leave now and I said this was your decision I don't know pretty much and then he it was really 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 difficult I got inside the house and I just burst into tears in front of my mum and I was like he's broke up with me um, and she was like, why? What? This is she I explained it to her and she was like, this is ridiculous. You shouldn't have been talking about it. And you've probably just scared him and give him a few days and he'll be okay. He wouldn't stop texting me. And I basically said, damn, like, this was your decision. You should have at least come and spoke to me about it instead of just making a decision for yourself based on what you think is, is, is the best thing for me. Like, that's not your choice, that is mine. This isn't what I want, and I'm telling you this isn't what I want. I love you, I want to be with you. This is your decision and your doing. He put something like, I can't deal with a breakup. And I put, well, I'm not treating this as a breakup. You can do what you want, but... It basically, it then resulted to him saying that he needed to sort... He needed to sort out what was going on in his mind. As I said, I didn't know if, if marriage and children was definitely something I wanted. I suppose you don't really know at the time. You don't know if, you know, financial circumstances, um, health circumstances. You just don't know what could happen in the future. And that was my wrongdoing for pushing that life upon him that he necessarily hadn't thought of for himself so yeah he um wouldn't stop texting me luckily the next day um i didn't have work thank god because i honestly don't think i could have even gone in he texts me in the morning basically my my sister heard and she came round and she came upstairs and threw her arms around me and i just burst into tears I don't even want to cry, like, it's fine now. Um, and I explained it all to her, it was like being, it was like being six again, and like, me and her were in our shared room and just talking about things. And like, I really, really, really am thankful that I have family, like her and my mum. So anyway, I decided to put in my microloop extensions so this is the backstory to why I didn't film putting in my microloop extensions because my sister helped me I was like look I need to do something fun will you please just help me put these in and and so I can feel better about myself because I feel like so shit so she did anyway and um he basically texts me saying if I feel up to it is would you like to meet up later and we'll go for a meal this was literally like the next day so I was a bit confused um, but I've, I wanted to and I've never been so nervous in my whole life. I got in the car which was really awkward. The car that I'd got in hundreds and hundreds of times, the man that I'd looked upon hundreds and hundreds of times and um, I couldn't even really look at him and like he was wearing a, a shirt that I'd recently bought him which was sweet and I think he was wearing the anniversary bracelet that I bought for him that has the date that we that we first met I think or it might be our anniversary date I'm not sure and I still had on this necklace which is what he gave me for my birthday this year in May and he was like oh you haven't taken it off it's like well no why would I and so we drove into Sutton outside a pub Ended up sitting in the car for maybe an hour, talking everything through. He told me his concerns and everything. I told him mine. I told him it wasn't fair about how he went about all that and to just completely switch on me. It wasn't fair. And he knows, like to this day, that it wasn't fair that he did that. And he has apologised profusely so many times. And that means so, so much to me because it's not even like one of us had cheated on the other one and someone had done something really bad it was just it was just a 
stupid like disagreement of something that may or may not ever even happen and I just felt so stupid I felt really shit basically and anyway he, he was like yeah I just want to make sure that we um I want to give it another go and want to make sure we do more things more often um and so from that point I felt really pressured to organize like activities and days out and things because I felt for a very long time after that day that I was standing on eggshells and I felt like he was going to switch on me very quickly and so I had a wall up which was just to protect me from him from him hurting me and so I spent a lot of money I spent so much money on Michael McIntyre tickets where did we go um where else did we go I'm not sure I did spend loads of money though like a lot as each day went past it got easier and I felt like day by day a brick was coming off my wall I'd never ever stopped loving him obviously I was just hurt and I needed that to go away for things to be back to how they were if not better in terms of the marriage and children thing i'm still not 100 percent on where that lies to be honest i've said to him that i every now and then i still think about that day and what happened and what brings me comfort is that he refers to it as a mistake a massive mistake which it was but I'm not going to hold that against him obviously, I'd rather just move on which is why I'm doing this. Um, most definitely not to hurt him or make him feel any sort of way or make you feel any sort of way about him. So yeah, I mean since then like things have been way better and <sighs> yeah I mean I still, I'm still not 100% about what's going on and would I say my wall is completely down? I'd say I've got one or two bricks left just as a safety net and he now knows that he needs to speak to me before doing anything <laughs> anything drastic but since then we've actually had a really lovely time we um, had a very very busy November by where we were doing lots of things which made it very expensive um, we went to London for a couple of days and we stayed in this like super duper tiny hotel and it was literally like you could lie in bed look over to the side of you and see your other half through a frosted glass door and a gap in the door frame where the door starts of them sitting on the loo <laughs> and it was just like Ugh. so i mean that was an awkward experience and to make it even more awkward it was like that week of the month if you get my drift it was that week and so <laughs> i just didn't want him seeing outlines of me like sorting myself out you know like i mean i love him and um i just I just you just don't need to see that we ended up having to have a system by where you would have earphones in music on full blast um, you face the opposite way to the bathroom and then the other person is just free to do their business if you like and then what else did we do we went out on the night time and we went to go see the lion king at the lyceum which was really good it was very expensive again but it was so good and then we went to bed we got up in the morning we went shopping um chris actually nearly died <laughs> um there was like they were doing roadworks on Oxford Street and um this lorry just turned in and completely took out all of these metal bars and so they went flying like sticking out and it was so close to him and like I didn't even register it until like it all stopped but I think he did and I was just like <gasps> whoa like are you okay and like yeah he basically did nearly die so I'm glad he didn't. Chris booked us like the most wonderful afternoon tea. It was like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory inspired and it actually came to like 90 quid altogether for like some sandwiches, some cakes, tea um, and then they put on a, a hefty service charge. It was a very posh hotel which is opposite the Lyceum um, Theatre in London but it was really great and then we got the train home so an hour and a half on the train I think um, and then we came home and I'm pretty sure we've done like so much stuff in November and the start of December and 
<sighs> I know it, it probably for you watching it it probably feels like I have gone insane and just been talking about how upset um, he'd made me and how now how wonderful it is and I mean you have to appreciate that it was the start of September in which this whole situation happened and I've had time to heal and we've had time to get back to our old selves like how we were at the start of the relationship and um, yeah I'm, I'm glad it's oh well I'm I'm glad at how it's worked out but I'm I don't think that was necessary that whole situation was not necessary it could have been avoided with just speaking I think but at the same time I suppose it makes you realize what you possibly have got and what you possibly may not have forever apart from that I guess I just want to finish on a happier note because these life updates are always so depressing and I, I just hate for you to leave them feeling like oh wow with a heavy heart you know um so as always i have a tea this is actually hot chocolate i recently bought a tassimo machine if you follow me on instagram i am so sorry because i'm sure that i have pissed you all off with videos and pictures um this is hot chocolate but it's all sort of gone to the bottom and i don't have a spoon i have makeup brushes but they haven't been cleaned in oil and so i'm not gonna I'll just drink it as it is and just have a really, really, really chocolatey gulp at the bottom. Okay, so in my last video I told you guys I was embarrassed about the fact that I am 21 and I didn't know how to drive. Um, I can now say that I got my act together and at the end of October I started learning how to drive. I have like an hour and a half less in a week, so it's quite expensive. Um, and I had my ninth lesson today. I'm just not very good with like practical stuff. I might undersell myself with how not good I am, but my the things I've learned with how to drive a car because um, I can't explain myself very well, so it comes out as like uh, just it just sounds really really stupid. Um, but anyway, I had like a really good lesson today. I am hopefully going to be doing my theory soon. I just, it's so boring. <laughs> it's so boring. And like, when I'm in my lessons and my driving instructor is like, oh yeah, this and this. So it's in the, it's in the highway code, if you've read it. I'm like, yeah, I've read it. Which I did, I read it once. Once, and I have no idea what any of it says. Um, because um, a lot of it's just common sense, isn't it? But... I would like to just get my theory test out of the way. It's it's booked, but like I've kept moving it and moving it and moving it, and now I think I've moved it to like February. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take me to learn to drive. I feel like it's going to be quite a while, just because I'm much better with mental learning and academic learning as opposed to practical <sighs> and paying attention to all these things at once, which I'm not too good at. <laughs> But I'm getting better. I'm way better now than I was when I like was in my first couple of weeks. So I'm starting to grow confidence now. But I cannot wait till I can drive because I always have to pay for postage for things. <laughs> and it would just be so much easier if I could just be like, oh, I am going to New Look. Is anybody coming with me? Or I could just get up and like to get to work, I get um, a lift from someone who lives in my little village thing um who i found on a website called street life which just think you know, i mean this isn't an ad but like my mum introduced me to it um and it's basically you can connect with people who live in your area and i think you get to pick up to like three areas that you can sort of follow so it's like facebook but imagine it's just it's everyone that signed up to that website in your area um so basically i was struggling because my mum got a new job because she was made redundant again um, she now works for like um, Ocado and Morrison's like driving the vans so like the home delivery so it's very possible if you're in the UK that my mum might actually deliver you food um, but you would have no idea what she looks like anyway but if you've got a dog and there's like a mad woman just like oh my god that like completely forgets your shopping and just goes up to the dog it's probably my mom. So yeah, anyway, I lost my train of thought. I've just been sat here for ages like, uh, um, but yeah, anyway, so I posted on there because I couldn't really get to work. I mean, it, literally from my house to work, it's five minutes in the car. If you're walking, however, it takes over an hour and a half and 
I just can't. I have walked and it's just it's just such a long way and my feet are killing and I'm tired by the time I get to work and then obviously I need to start my day and then I'd have to walk home and it's just it'd be a long, long day. Um so anyway I posted on there saying that like I needed um a, a car share, maybe someone that goes to that area um where my work is and um thankfully someone replied and, and said like yeah, um, my husband works in that area and we live in the same place as you do. Um, we can arrange lifts and things. So I was like, oh, yay, this is perfect. Like, um, And I felt a bit awkward because obviously it's strangers and I had to walk to like the shop in my village um, and then look for someone in a car, like a man in a car, and just be like, uh, are you so-and-so? And like get in the car and trust them to take me to work. So... It's very awkward, but um, this woman was lovely anyway, who arranged it all. It was the wife that arranged it all. Um, and so he takes me in the mornings and picks me up sometimes, it depends, because my mum works like nights, then mornings and nights and mornings, so it changes. Um, but yeah, like I'm so thankful for them and I need to get them like such a good Christmas present to say thank you because they refused like any money from me, which works better in my favor, because then obviously that's more money that I can spend elsewhere. But I feel like I should give something back to them because they are literally saving me my job. And I'd probably be really skinny if I could like walk, but no, it's just not gonna happen. Ooh, I'm getting really hot now because I'm talking really fast and there's lots of lights on me because it is winter here in the UK. Um, it's now like um, not too far from Christmas. It's like just over a week. So hopefully I can get this uploaded as soon as possible. Um, and you guys can see it before Christmas. I did want to film Christmas this year and I asked Chris if, well I asked everyone who it concerns basically, I asked Chris, um, well I said I would like to film, do you have any problems because I've tried to film uh, a, a couple of times and he's just been like I don't want to be in it and it kind of just ruins the whole thing and I can't use any of the footage that I'd done anyway. Um, I told my mum, my sister, like, it's going to be a much bigger Christmas this year, so I'm really excited about it, and, like, I wanted to film it, and Chris basically turned around two weeks later and was like, actually, I don't feel comfortable with, like, strangers watching me. It was like, I don't have the confidence that you do on camera. I was like, yeah, but you're not even supposed to notice it. Like, it's just a camera in the corner of the room that films us whatever we're doing on Christmas Day. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But I suppose if you are shy and... As annoying as it is, <laughs> obviously I have to respect um, that he doesn't want to be on the internet, which is fine. Um, so what I am going to do is, I'm still going to film it, um, but it might just have to be like a family thing, which I hate the idea of. And maybe he'll feel better about it next Christmas. <laughs> so you can watch him like a year after the films. Um, I was going to upload it anyway, um, but put it on private, so... I, I've got it safe on the internet so yeah I don't know it's a shame but I have to kind of do what he wants because you know I'm hoping that everyone else is going to be fine with it the best be because I've like spent so much money on decorations because I want this like to be perfect and I love watching them back like I didn't do one last year because I wanted a break and I said like right I'm going to do it 2015 so I am going to do it, you just might not be able to see it. Um, I will be doing the What I Got For Christmas haul, probably on Boxing Day, um, and then maybe a Boxing Day haul, depends how much money I spend, and also a Goodbye 2015 and Hello 2016, so we can do like a year reflection, which I'm looking forward to. I love the videos at the end of the year. Hopefully I'm, I might speak to you before Christmas. If not, I'm wishing you all a wonderful Christmas and a fabulous new year. And um, I hope you get everything that you want. But yeah, don't forget, um, links to my Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr and Twitter are down below. So you want to come over and follow me. And um, that's all from me. So I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>